All right, we're in uh, the F. 450 again with uh, Peter Lyon, who is, what's your job with Ford? So I'm the engine calibration manager for diesel and large gasoline engines. Now, we're going to run up uh, this grade again. This time we've got, how much weight we got in the back? So total is 36,200. But the trailer is? The trailer, I will verify, just to make sure we get our facts right. Yeah. It is 20, 26,900 pounds. So with the three of us in here, add another 750 pounds, give or take. We're like 3,000 pounds short of the maximum total capacity, mm -hmm. which is, uh, I think, uh, 31,200? 30, 31,200 is the max trailer. And uh, we're going to see how this truck does going up the hill, but I kind of wanted to ask you about a little bit about the engine technology. So how is this uh, new 6.7 different from the one that was introduced, uh, what, was it, what was it, like four years ago? Four like, years ago, yeah. 2010 for the 2011 model year we came out with it. Yeah, so how have you improved it? Major differences are we got a larger turbo, uh, went from a GT32 to a GT35 to a GT37 frame size. Um, and what that means is there's bigger wheels and they can compress more air. Um, that helps us achieve more power um, and uh, achieve more power both at sea level and at altitude. The second thing is, in order because you lose some efficiency when you do that, in order to, to maintain fuel economy. Uh, and emissions performance, we re have revised the fuel injector and have a new modern, uh, more modern technology on the injector tips. That's the part that's got these little teeny holes that inject fuel into the cylinder. So with these little holes, we get better, much better uh, fuel atomization and burn. So therefore, as we calibrate the engine or tune the engine, we can trade off between engine emissions, uh, fuel economy, and noise, combustion noise, which is all important. Um, bottom line is we got a bigger turbo make more power with carryover better fuel economy depending on the application now you were saying for putting around town you want a small turbo or going up this deep grade you want a big turbo so how did you get better fuel economy with this big turbo so like i said it's back to the combustion system we revise the injectors um, in order to have better fuel economy excuse me while i watch the truck here yeah, yeah. better fuel economy um, uh, in the combustion system uh, with the new turbo. So the turbo lost a little fuel, the injectors gained fuel, so we come back and even, but more performance, right, more so, capability. So how does the uh, engine braking work when we're going downhill? You said when we were going downhill in this truck, we completely shut off the fuel to it. Right, so the first thing you do is you're going off, you're going down the hill, you got your foot off the accelerator, you're basically on a diesel. Anytime you're at any non-idle RPM and your fuel's off the, excuse me, your pedal's off the accelerator, your fuel's turned off. Um, that's how we control torque is through fuel. So the engine just becomes a giant air engine, right? Right. right. So it's sucking air. And then what do the what do the veins of the turbo do to slow down uh, the truck? So what we do is when you're going down the hill, we modulate and control what we call negative torque or absor engine absorbing. And what it is is the little veins in the in the uh, turbine side, that's the exhaust side of the turbo, they direct the exhaust gas onto the turbine wheel, which spins. And we can control that to, to uh, we control that angle with what's called a variable geometry mechanism and in the end we can control those such that we can actually shut off or start blocking off the exhaust flow and what that does is raise the restriction in the turbo which then is kind of like a potato in the exhaust for lack of a better term right but it's back to the same concept we restrict the exhaust flow the engine is a great big air pump it's pumping against this restriction it absorbs it takes more power to do it it absorbs more power going down the hill you get better engine braking just passed the ram there. If you notice, the ram uh, was passed also by the lighter Ford some time ago. He started off in first place. He'll end up in third place here if uh, this run is like the other five we've done already. <laughs> so the Ford guys are proud of the fact that the ram with the Cummins <laughs> is, is in the back. Now, of course, does that have the uh, 800 or 850 uh, pound foot of torque Cummins? Because you know there's a high performance one. Which that is that is the high the performance. highest highest performance highest tow capability truck they have. So basically, you're saying this is uh, 10 pounds of torque more than that truck. 10 foot pounds. Yep. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. But more importantly, uh, on the other end, it's uh, significant. They're like 385 horsepower, 440. So when you're going up this hill, yeah. horsepower moves you up the hill. 
So that's why we're passing the Cummins. Right. So we're running right now just under 2,600 RPM, which is near the power peak. Uh, so this engine's putting out all it can. We're just above sea level, right around 440 horsepower. Uh, it's modern temperature, so we're, we're running right at rated power. It seems like uh, this would be a cooling issue with that much power. Well, the cooling system is designed to cater for that much power. Um, we have minimal changes in the cooling system from, from the previous engine. Um, which shows you how capable the cooling system is. Uh, uh, this will cool this engine at this power level up till well over 100 degrees Fahrenheit. All right, let me ask you this. This is a common rail diesel. What does that mean exactly? So this is a common rail. So when that, what that means is, is it, it's similar to a gasoline common rail engine. Um, all the fuel, the high-pressure fuel, comes out of the high-pressure pump and up to 30,000 PSI. It yep. goes into one common rail. Off of that rail come each of the injectors. And each of the injectors is controlled by electronic piezo stack, which basically is a crystal, and you apply electricity to it, and it expands and opens a little needle in the injector. So what it sees that common rail is, is that there's one common rail that all, all the injectors feed from at high pressure. The older diesel engines, um, they basically had a pump, a mechanical pump that pushed fuel into each injector. And so it didn't have like an electronically controlled one, it was all mechanical. Uh, you couldn't have multiple injections per cylinder. You basically had one injection every time the pump went around and the engine went around. Uh, so it gives you more control of how much fuel is going in the engine? Extremely much more control. The other thing it allows you to do is shape the combustion event. So uh, you can have up to, depending on what's going on, up to five injections per cylinder event, right? So the cylinder, the piston's coming up, it gets to the top, we do a pilot, maybe another pilot, a main injection, a late early post, a late wow. post. So you can do up to five injections per cylinder event with a common rail diesel. You cannot do that with the old style injectors. And you said in this new generation of uh, power stroke, what you also did is you, you changed the holes, right? So you can you can shape the way that the uh, diesel is going into them. The, the most important thing in a diesel engine, especially common rail, uh, in the first high way you calibrate is actually the hardware. So the top of the piston, if you look at it, it's not flat. It's got a bowl. It's got a dish in it, right? I mean. No, no, it's actually got a dish. If you look at the cutaway, yeah. you'll find that the top part of it's flat, but then it's got this bowl. Okay. And there's different kinds of bowl designs you have, and there's a, some serious science around that. And the injector has got a spray pattern that comes out at some angle. It's almost horizontal, and they're trying to hit the bowl, come around, and get the fuel to move, right? Part of the problem is you're injecting this fuel at very high pressure, and you have a very short burn duration. So you have to get the fuel to mix with the air. Every little bit of diesel fuel has got to go find some oxygen to, in order to combust. So you got to get the fuel mixed around with the air in order to get it to burn. Otherwise, you have incomplete combustion, high emissions, high soot, and a lot of noise if it doesn't you're burn properly. Rolling coal, man. Exactly. You don't want that. I mean, when you see a lot of when you see a lot of black smoke coming out of a diesel, not only is it just you know a lot of uh, black smoke coming out, but that's fuel that's unburned. That's basically that, a wasted fuel. That carbon is like, you know, it's yeah. like soot. It's like charcoal. You could burn it and make more make more power, be more efficient. So, yes, you definitely don't like to see that coming out. Um, and you have to design the combustion system, as we call it, between the injector and the piston bowl in order to have the best combustion um, efficiency, burn the most fuel, have the most release the least amount of emissions, and have the quietest combustion chamber. If you'll notice, I mean, compared to the older diesels, these things are all much quieter. You can't hear them. You can't hear them. They yeah. sound like a gasoline engine. Uh, they're yeah, much, you much You don't better. have that kind of percolator, old, uh, old coffee-style percolator sound, right? Which used to no, those. you don't really it's want that either, and our customers don't want it, and we don't want to deliver it. So so between those two changes, primarily between the injectors and the turbo, we were able to offer our customers a lot more capability, towing capability, uh, both sea level and, importantly, at altitude. Um, and in the hot with the larger turbo. Hey, Nathan? Yeah? I'm guessing that is more <laughs> than you ever wanted to know about the new Power Stroke fuel injector. But thank you very much. That was really enlightening and really interesting. Thank you. Thank really you very much. It. Not Thanks. a problem. Hope you guys enjoyed the drive.